<laughs> okay, all right. So everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I have Brandy Berwick with me. And if you watched, uh, been following my videos, then you know that Brandy has been on before. So I'm excited to have Brandy back on. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe. So today, what I want us to talk about is forgiveness and single motherhood. Um, I'm a, well, I was a single mom um, up until two and a half years ago, until I got married. Um, I became pregnant at 19 years old, had my son when I was 20. And my son's father just would be in and out, you know, just kind of doing what he wanted to do um, as a dad, whether that be physical, emotional, financial, you know, he just kind of did whatever he wanted to do. And I know a lot of other single moms. And I notice sometimes that mothers carry the burden of frustration of having to do it alone or not feeling that they have the support of the other parent and it's a hard thing to navigate um, trying to process your own feelings towards that person in their absence while also trying to be a good parent and navigating walking through parenting with your child as they are also experiencing that absent parent or that inconsistent parent as well. Yeah. Um, and so Brandy, I know that you're a single mom. And so I just want us to kind of talk about just navigating a season of single motherhood when the other parent has either made the decision to not be involved at all or made the decision to be involved whenever they want to be involved, to parent when they want to parent. So first, I want you to kind of share your story of single motherhood. It, like from the beginning. <laughs> um, I conceived, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so I, the gentleman that I got pregnant by, we were actually just cool, knew each other for probably a little over a year. I met him, honestly, after getting out of a relationship. Um, I, definitely was still, I think, in a very broken place of not understanding some things from the past relationship and just the whole trust issue and just some other things of like why they turned out the way they were. I really wasn't interested in dating again, but we were cool. Um, we would talk from time to time. He ended up coming to visit me where I lived at that particular time. And I knew that I probably shouldn't have been hanging out with him, but you know, we always make unwise decisions, not always, but I didn't make a very wise decision. So I got pregnant with my son and that was, gosh, when Jaden was born. So that was in around May, June-ish, beginning of, end of May, beginning of June, 2008. And I conceived Jaden in February, 2009. But as I was going through my pregnancy, there were some interesting things that happened. I realized that when I found out I was pregnant, when I needed to tell him, I had made the decision that I was not going to um, not carry him, that I was going to carry him because I did have a previous abortion. And so I, I had just really made up in my mind that, you know what, Lord, I am going to carry this out. Mm -hmm. There is purpose. I can't imagine going through what I went through before in that previous relationship that I had. So I would say I had talked to him. I had called him probably like, the. I think I found out maybe a month into my pregnancy. It was still early on. I let him know. And I just remember him saying like, I got to come talk to you. And I was just like, no, um, you're not going to come talk to me. I'm not, I'm keeping the baby, whatever that looks like. But he, every once in a while, he would like call, but then I noticed that it was just like completely drift. So I decided to Google his name, but nothing came up. And because he wasn't really a prominent person, he, people knew of him, but at that time, but didn't really like know like him. And so I Googled again, didn't find anything. 
And then, but then I found like this page that talked about who he has dated and who he was, I guess, engaged to or getting married or, or was getting married to. So I'm scrolling through all this and I'm like, okay, how do I like find any other information? So at the time, YouTube was just really, I think, coming into what it was. I really never got on YouTube that much. Um, it wasn't what it is today and how great it is and all these great videos, but people basically were posting like vlogs of their life or events or weddings. So I was like, I've never tried this site. Let me go to YouTube and try it. So I type in his name in the YouTube bar, like search bar. And the first thing that comes up is a wedding video. And I thought I was going to die. I was like, this can't be. Like, this just cannot be. And I remember like looking in, um, I was 28 at the time, looking into the screen and just saying like, you hear, before you click the picture, you just see like, I forget what they call it because I'm not techn technological savvy, but it was just like the still picture of just him and he has an older son. They were standing like behind each other. So as soon as you hit play, there's this wedding happening in the Bahamas that happened a year prior to that. So when I got pregnant, that following, right after I told him I was pregnant, he was getting to celebrate his one year anniversary with his wife. But I didn't find that out until that October, five months into my pregnancy, roughly, that he was married. And I just remember that at that moment, I remember like weeping, but then I grabbed my Bible and I was just like, I forgive him now. But I made that decision too, as I went through my pregnancy, that I was not going to let anything like steal my joy and that I needed to be in good spirits because I'm carrying a child now that I'm going to give birth to. And I don't want to carry stress or anything. Didn't take away from the disappointment, but I made it that decision right then to carry out my pregnancy that I'm going to have to push through a lot. But this is also this, what it also showed me was the consequences of my own sin of making like a bad decision. So I just remember like Jaden came February 23rd, 2009. I remember calling him and letting him know that he was born but he really just didn't want to be involved. I can't give an honest reason of why he didn't want to. I, I don't know why. I mean, I wasn't his wife, of course, and he was still married. So I could understand like there was probably some controversy there. I do remember the day I found out, I texted him and said that I, I know and I just remember us talking later on that evening. And I was just like, I just would have really appreciated for you to say something. Like, I forgive you, but I just don't understand. But once my son was here, I just realized how much of a blessing my son was to me and what I needed to do to be a mother. There was no longer I can focus on what he's not doing or what he wasn't doing through my pregnancy. Um, there were moments that it was lonely or going to the doctor by yourself or not having anybody there with you. I had really great friends back at home that um, were super supportive and who are still supportive to this day. And my son's 12, but it was definitely an interesting. But Brandy, how, because here's been a struggle for me, right? And I am, I'm married now, right? But I would I was not surprised by Jordan's dad lack of support, right? Like that, you know, thinking you are, no, like I was not surprised that he did not help me financially, that he would see him whenever he wanted to see him. Like that part did not surprise me, right? Mm -hmm. But it was still very frustrating for me, okay? Mm -hmm. Because he, at some point, um, got back with his other son's mom. They had a son together. She had another son. So I'm like, you're playing family man, right? Why aren't you including Jordan in that family, right? Or you recognize that these children have needs 
which should also make you recognize that Jordan needs things too, right? But you continue to make the choice of not doing. And so I remember Jordan was in daycare and it was almost $500 a month for him to go to daycare. He may have helped me once pay for daycare. And yeah. there were so many times that I would work um, two jobs to make sure that Jordan and I had everything that we needed, right? right? And my parents, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have been able to, to work those, you know, part-time jobs when I needed to, or just wouldn't have any support. Yeah. And that used to make me really upset with him, you know, that like he had the luxury of kind of choosing, right? Like when he was going to do whatever he was going to do or when he was going to see him. And I didn't have that. And it was really hard for me when I thought about that. Cause I'm like, my child doesn't deserve this. So although I can recognize like, well, Tracy, you know, you made a decision to have sex with this man, you know, children can, you know, come from that, but it did not make it easier for me for a long time to not feel away about him. So how did you, because you mentioned he may not have been like well known, but he was known, right? He was. So how, how did you, <laughs> like, how did you not, or just tell me how you, you walked through that process of not being upset or being able to forgive him, even when you were, when you found out and when he kind of made the decision of, I'm not going to be a dad or I'm not going to be a father to him. Like, how? <laughs> Wait, I had to take a moment. <laughs> um, I think for me, right? And I'm not trying to get like overly spiritual or anything, but I think for me, a lot of times we can read the Bible for myself and study the Bible and we can be like, oh, that's really great for this person. Like scripture, you read something, you see something and you think, oh, that's great for, I know what this is for, or this is for this person. But there are two scriptures that always have kept me rooted and grounded in not blaming him and teaching my son too about what forgiveness is. And that is um, Ephesians in chapter four, um, verse 32, it says, and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God forgave you. And then I love the one in Colossians as well, when it talks about the Christian life. And I believe it's Colossians 3, 12 and 13. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. And I think for me, I think for me, it was all about, I have to take ownership for what I've done. I can't focus on like what he's not doing, what he should be doing, the choices that he's making, but really focusing on the choices that I made. Also knowing that, how can I hold something against him? I can't sit up here like I'm on the pedestal next to Jesus, like I'm just the perfect woman because I'm not. I have made so many mistakes and yet I still, for some reason, God still loves me so much that he continues to forgive me. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that was something like I wanted to teach my son and he gets it at a young age, but he also gets it now even being 12 years old. It was just so, so important for me to not focus on, well, he's not there, he's not present, but what's my duty? What is my responsibility? And the unfortunate thing is that when we sin, there's consequences for our sins. God doesn't tell us what those are going to look like, but they are to come. And so maybe part of my struggle being a single motherhood um, and single motherhood, I didn't have like the family helping me out. I, when I had Jaden, I took a year off from school, went back to finish school. I was working 40 plus hours a week. I was 
um, had Jaden in daycare, I was fortunate enough to find a daycare that had went into like then close to midnight. So I was in the hotel industry at that time. So I was able to, and it was right down the street for me. So it just seemed like every aspect of my life, God also made provision for me to be able to do whatever I needed to do. Um, even now living in Atlanta, Georgia, we have no family here, but God has just put around us such great friends and that are like our family that I'm just so grateful for. So I think when it comes to forgiveness, it wasn't more so, it was more so me focusing on, God, you've forgiven me. How can I not forgive him? If I say that I am trying to walk this Christian walk and be more like you and carry the characteristics, I mean, who am I to be walking around here not forgiven? Not one single person. And not to shift my focus on what he's not doing, but to shift my focus on what I am, what, what can I do better? How can Brandy be a better person? How can Brandy be a better example as a mother to her son? But also, how can I, when Jaden gets old enough and start asking about who his dad is, why is he not present? Holy Spirit, please give me the right words. Because honestly, I couldn't just put all the blame on his dad there was a 50-50 blame there. Are there moments that I wish that his dad would help out? Absolutely. I remember him calling one day talking about he needed money for a train ticket. And I'm buying from Boston to New York. And I was just like, absolutely not. Like I'm buying <laughs> diapers, but I also know that was like a ploy to try to make me think like he has nothing. Like he's just really has nothing. And I'm not saying that he may not have gone through some tough seasons financially. He possibly could have. I have no idea. I can't go on what I, I can go on what I think, but I also have to give that to the Lord. I just couldn't keep my focus there. And so I think for me, as I continue to stay grounded in God's word and versus looking at the Bible and thinking about how it's good for someone else, really reading it for myself and studying and realizing, no, this word is for me. I don't need to think about, well, anyone else when I'm reading the Bible, but think about how it's affecting me. I think that was, for me, why I'm so able to forgive. Because every single day I think about how God forgives me. I mean, I don't even, it makes it easy. Now, I'm not going to say you forget. I, I haven't forgotten, but I also can't say that I've dwelled on it either. Like, I haven't, you I don't continue yeah, I, I mean, I was at peace the day I found out. It was hurtful. I, I felt a gut-wrenching pain, not because, I'll tell you why. It was more so because of the shame. I was already pregnant by someone that wasn't my husband. Now I'm finding out that I'm pregnant by someone who is married. So those who really know me are going to know that I've never dated a married man. If you tell me you're married, I'm not going to date you or talk to you or even be friends with you. I really respect um, the covenant of marriage. I've always been that way. But in this situation, for me, it was the guilt and the shame that really overtook me more so. And just like, why didn't he tell me so I can make the best decision for myself? Not saying that I wouldn't have carried the pregnancy out, but maybe I would have thought about things a little bit I don't know what it would have changed. I think it just would have made me feel better that he actually was just like, you know what? I messed up. You know, I need to ask for forgiveness from you. But I also have to know too, he was not a Christian. Um, he didn't know the Lord at all. He was, um, he believed more in the Muslim practice. And so even as a friend, I was very strong on what I believed, but my actions clearly didn't didn't come out and show that as a Christian, how I should be living my life because therefore I fell to sin and I'm human just as much as he's human and I'm no better of a person than he is. So as a mother too, I tell my son, don't ever look at me as being the better parent because I take care of you. I'm doing what my responsibility is when I had you and we all make good choices we all make bad choices your mother has made good choices and I've also made some not good choices and in my parenting but I still need to parent you and and work my way through that and Jesus has been with me to do that so I think when I talk about his dad to him it's more so 
maybe he's not making the best choices right now, but there's going to be moments that you're not going to make good choices either. And the one thing is, is that you know who Jesus is, Jaden. So I want you to know how to forgive and using these scriptures as a foundation for my son, that if Jesus can forgive you when you don't get it right, how can you not forgive him? Mm-hmm. And so does it take away the hurt and the, uh, the absence of a father being present? Absolutely not. But my prayer is having God to surround my son with good godly men, going to a church that um, is a strong foundation for him, has great men there. And I feel like God has always led us to what I've prayed for. And so even though there might not be that actual father figure in his life, he has had great men in his life that pour into him. And there's also, you know, like people like my dad and my brother who love and care for him. And a guy that I dated for a few years that we were really, really close to that they're still in contact and he loves him and he's been a part of his life. He has an amazing Godfather. And so I'm just, I'm grateful for what I've prayed for. And when it hurts, I pray that God gives me the wisdom and the words to encourage him um, how to navigate this. I think the hardest part for me is that When we sin, we have consequences. Just in this case, my consequences don't just affect me. It affects me and my son. So what has been one of the, um, like, toughest conversations you had to have with Jaden about, you know, his dad not being involved? You know, like, was it him asking a question or, you know, was it, you know, you seeing him hurt or, you know, confused about, you know, his actual dad not being involved and how you navigated that conversation with him? I think one of the ones I really remember, I thought I was going to crash my car one day. (laughs) He had to be maybe like three and a half, four. We were living in Charlotte at the time and I was driving in the morning to drop him off at school. And I think it actually... I was, we were driving home actually, I believe, cause I picked him up from school and we were driving home and we had a little, probably about 30 minute drive home with traffic. And I just remember picking him up. And as soon as he got in the car, I strap him in, I'm in the car, we're driving. <laughs> and my son says, mom, all my friends, their dads come and pick them up sometimes. Why doesn't my dad want to come pick me up? <sighs> I was like, uh, really, after a long day of work, Jesus, this is what you're throwing at me. Like, I just wasn't ready. It was more so like, how was your day? You know, what did you make? And I just remember like just taking a deep breath in the car and just like, Holy Spirit, give me exactly what I'm supposed to say to my son to encourage him. And I just simply told him, I said, your mother And he was four. So I've always had to like explain to him in a way that he would understand at each age group, because what he understands now is completely than what he understands at four. And I just said, you know, your dad, because he's absent, doesn't take away that maybe he may think of you or love you. And he may not do those things either, but I can't remember verbatim what I said, but it was something along the lines of just Unfortunately, your mommy made bad, a bad choice. And so you know how God tells us, because Jaden understood the Bible and sin and who Jesus was at this time, because we've always had that in our home. And I just said, your mom made a bad decision. And one of the bad decisions is that mommy didn't get married or uh, trust God enough for her to get a spouse and to do it the right way and be led by the Lord and her relationships. So therefore she had a relationship out of wedlock. And so you're looking at the fruits of people who have gotten married and had their kids together. Not saying that it's all perfect, but it's unfortunate that because of mommy's sin, you're also paying for that sin as well. And so mommy just really apologizes for you know, your dad not being present. It's just a choice that he's made. Mommy would love for your dad to know who you are because you are such an awesome, awesome young man. And mommy's so proud to be your mother. But what we can do, you know, we can just continue to pray that one day God will allow you to meet him. And whenever you want to pray for your dad or pray, you know, pray for him, 
we are mommy's more than happy to do that. And so I think I just, I never put the blame on him. It was also me taking ownership of that as well, because I mean, this didn't just happen with him by himself. Right. Yeah. And I've had conversations with Jordan now that he's older and just saying, you know, because of me not making a good choice, you did not ever get to experience waking up to both of your parents on Christmas morning. You have not had the opportunity to experience family vacation, you know, with me and your dad. Like you just, you don't know that life, you know, your birthday, you know, is a, a separate you know, event as well. And I tell him, you know, you have to be mindful of the choices that you make as an adult so that you don't have to experience some of the same things that your children won't have to experience some of the things that you've had to experience. Because now that I'm married, this is Jordan's first real experience in having a dad, you know, like he had my dad or whatever, but my dad has been like, pop off you know like yeah I mean like straight up granddad you know like yeah I can't remember a time where my dad has really like fussed at Jordan or like anything you know he may say all right man you know do better do your school work but like right you know, I'm really disciplining him whereas you know like Lindrick has really stepped into that role of let me show you, you know, what a man is supposed to do. Let me show you things that are going to help you in your life. I'm going to be tough on you. I'm going to hold you accountable, but it's all for your good. And so I'm really thankful for that. But even in that, you know, sometimes I'm like, Lindrick came at a time where Jordan's really figuring out who he is. And still you know like I don't know how often Jordan talks to his dad because he has his own phone right so I don't know if they talk every day or whatever the case may be because I don't ask but it's been tough because he's a growing boy so stand on him about his schoolwork, you know teaching him things around the house and that responsibility and sometimes I'm like I wonder how my husband is feeling coming on at this time. <laughs> no, know, for sure. You know, much harder um, to me to navigate. Um, but I mean, like he does it and I, I know that he loves him and he, you know, doesn't, you know, complain about it. But sometimes that still makes me feel away with his dad. So even though I'm not mad at his dad, so to speak, about the way that he has been in Jordan's life, I sometimes still can't believe that he is not as active of a dad, you know, like he's just not active, you know? And so I still sometimes have to not feel away when my husband and I feel frustrated in our parenting of Jordan, right? When we're confused about you know, why are we having to say the same thing over and over? You know, like, why does it seem like, you know, he's not getting what we're saying? You know, why are we fussing about assignments? You know, like, why this? So I think, you know, that's something that I'm still navigating with. And I'm not mad at Jordan's dad at this point, but sometimes I just shake my head because I'm like, you just haven't done, right? Um, but one of the things that has like you talked a lot about, um, you know, forgiveness and like the verses that you go to, but one um, book that um, truly blessed my life was The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. And in that book, he talks about how um, bitterness and offense, how, you know, it can just really cause your heart to be hardened. And if we want the Lord to forgive us, we also have to forgive. And sometimes that means forgiving over and over, <laughs> you know, and over. Um, and that's a hard thing, I think, for people to be able to, to do because we're looking at typically, you know, from a more worldly perspective, right? Well, I'm not going to let you keep hurting me or I'm not going to forget what you've done or I'm going to pay you back for what you've done to me because, you know, like I didn't deserve this or you hurt my child and I'm, I can't believe that you would, you know, do that or whatever or that you wouldn't want to be involved, you know, in our child's life and you posting on social media that you're doing this and you're doing that and you're living this good life and we're over here struggling to make it and so on and so forth. So that has really helped me navigate this season while also 
recognizing that it's not going to be easy every single day. Yeah. To, you know? Yeah. No, I, but I think I, when you were talking about Jordan, like when you're parenting, like telling them the same thing over and over and over again. And I think about, I think like Colossians is so good for this because um, Colossians 3, where it talks about the life of a new man and then like our Christian life. So how we're being, you know, new in Christ, he for, you know, forgives us like we have Jesus. And I feel like as an adult, we have sometimes struggled with the same sin over and over and over again. And how many times has God has to get our attention over and over again, but he's such a loving and forgiving God. And I think one of the things for me, as I have accepted Christ into my life, one of the things I think I've learned with maturity is that it's not just knowing that he died on the cross for my sins and I can come to him and just tell him everything, but it's more so of really understanding like who he was, understanding like those he used in the word, but also understanding like the more that I say that I know who he is, the more I desire to be more like him. Now, I know I'm never going to be perfect, right? I'm never going to be Jesus. None of us will be. Right. But what we can strive to do is to have that patience, is to have that be loving, to have that kindness. And the same thing in, in my parenting with Jaden, there are things that I tell him over and over again, but then I'm reminded that Jesus has told me some things over and over and over again. And the greatest thing is that I get an opportunity all the time to take off my old self and put on new and walk into what God has for me. And I just think like that is so, so important because I think sometimes we can get so caught up in our, and like what we're feeling and ourselves and I've always asked God, please make me humble. Please show me myself. Like when I get up in the morning and I'm washing my face and I'm looking in the mirror, Lord, show me those things about me as a mother, as a person that I really need, need work on. Lord, turn this heart into a heart of flesh and remove it. You know, if it's a heart of stone, like I don't want that. Like I want you, I want it to be so soft that you can mold it into what you want it to be. Like mold me into what you desire me to be, not what I think it should be, not what the world thinks it should be. And I think I struggle sometimes with the social media platforms because there's, I see women who are like, I'm not bitter, but then they're like, how they talk about the other person or they have to prove like, I'm misindependent, like I don't need help. I think sometimes we go from one extreme to the next. And I think it's so important to, to forgive because I think a lot of times that a lot of women are still holding bitterness mm -hmm. and hurt inside and we mask it with like going to capture our bag we don't need a man I'm very strong I can do whatever I can do without him I don't need him he was leaning on me in the first place instead of us stopping and saying like how did I even end up with this person like let's let's go to the root like what state of my mind and my heart was was I at at that time and for me I know that I was broken. I know that I shouldn't have been dating. I know that I should have been spending more time with the Lord. I knew that night after we hung out, I should have took my butt right back to home and not go to his hotel room. Not thinking like, oh, I can be strong and nothing happens because our flesh gets weak. And I'm just being honest that when I think about the decisions I have made and how God gives me the opportunity to put off the old self and take hold of that. And I'm reading this in my Bible and one of the devotions, take hold of that, which Jesus has already taken hold of for me, which is my sins and forgiving me. I mean, how can I sit here and continue to bash somebody, to continue to talk bad about them, to continue to like, why are you not doing what you're supposed to do? When I know there's probably things even in my parenthood, there's probably things I don't get right. And the Lord's probably like, why are you not doing what you're supposed to do, Brandy? And even though I'm in a better place spiritually and grounded, I just think it's, I think it's so important just for us to like look at ourselves 
and to look at what be so much more focused on me that I don't even have time to be focused on what he's doing. But also when the Holy Spirit does lead me, which he has at various times throughout these years to cover him in prayer, I do. And I don't ask God, like, why do you want me to cover him in prayer? But I'm like, okay, God, because you know what? There are people in those times that I wasn't probably doing the best or doing well, that they were covering me in prayer and I had no clue they were praying for me. And even though he doesn't know the Lord, I don't know what God can do. I don't know how God can transform his life. I don't want any hurt or harm to happen to him. I don't want, I don't want any of those things. I don't want any ill will to happen towards him at all. I'm sad that his marriage fall, fell apart in that I went through so much guilt and shame. So even as we talk about forgiving other people, I really had to get to a place too, where I forgave myself. Yeah. And that's, I think that's so key because I think sometimes we, we shift, right? We shift some of the responsibility instead of taking some time to examine ourselves and really look at our part in it and letting go of whatever we're holding, whether it's being mad at ourselves that we, you know, made that decision um, that has resulted in this. So as we're wrapping up, what would you say or what advice would you give to the single mom who who is angry and who is upset right who herself may not have a relationship with god you know she may know god may be a believer right but relationship may not be as solid or as strong or even who is an unbeliever who may see this what advice would you give to her? I would say one, two, not so much focus on what that other person's not doing, but really focus on allowing God to heal your heart, um, to heal those broken places if they're broken, to ask God to help you um, heal from bitterness. Because I do believe there's so much purpose and a lot could come out of being a single mother too. Like, even though this wasn't God's will for me to have a kid out of wedlock, I've also have come to God in repentance, but I've also seen his grace and mercy and how he's carried me through um, being a single mother. So I would just encourage you as a mother to just work through that. That forgiveness does bring freedom. Doesn't mean that you're gonna forget what has happened to you, but there can be a place of peace and what God has next for you, when we stay in one place, sometimes we can't allow the door to open for what God wants to do. I remember saying that I wanted to be whole and I wanted to be healed. That if I desired to be married one day or to even be the best mother that I can to Jaden, I wanted to be healed and whole. And counseling was the best thing that I could have ever done for myself. And I never thought that I could be healed and be made whole, but I really have so much joy and so much peace, even as a single mother, that I don't even focus on what his dad's not doing, that I focus so much more on how can God use me? What should I be doing? What are those character things or character issues that I'm still struggling with? How am I being a mom to Jaden? Because just because I'm present doesn't mean I'm perfect either. So I think it's an opportunity for us too as mothers to kind of like just check our own hearts and ask God to reveal himself to, to us because this man didn't get involved in this by himself. And there's other situations where people have become single parents that were married and got out of the marriage and they're divorced now and it didn't end up the way that they thought it was going to be. I don't know what that is like to be married and to see something just crash before my eyes and now you find yourself single parenting. Even in that, what I do know is that Jesus is still on the throne and he is still present and he's still a loving and a forgiving God. And so that you don't continue to replay all the things of why it happened, but that you really ask God to just start to heal, heal you and that you seek for wisdom and guidance and asking God to connect you to 
other loved ones or people who have maybe gone through the same thing that will give you good godly advice, not their own personal advice, but really what the word of God says. I think that's just so crucial and to really find forgiveness because walking in bondage is not fun. And our kids can feel when we're in that state, when we can be so tense and we're yelling at them because we're just so tense and so, so frustrated from what has taken place to us. And we're working two jobs and we're up late at night and we're up early in the morning and stressed because you can't find a babysitter. I think all that goes with everything, but God will provide, God will give you the grace to go through each season with your child. He'll mm -hmm. give you exactly what you need. So I would just encourage you to go to counseling, find forgiveness, be in the word of God. When you read the word of God, um, don't just look at it for it for to be relatable to somebody else, but that is relatable to you and ask God to show you yourself and be careful who you surround yourself with and who you're allowing to pour into you. Um, because revenge is definitely not the answer. God says revenge is his. And I believe we can live full, amazing, wonderful lives as single parents when we allow God to be God and we just do what he desires us to do. Yes, that was good. Okay. Um, Thank you. I, when I was thinking about different things to talk about um, and I, I wrote down single motherhood and it just dropped in my spirit um, forgiveness because I think that um, it's, it's so many women wanting to be really good moms but I think sometimes not having forgiveness towards that other parent for whatever reason can um, be a hindrance and absolutely to really be um, the best mom that you can be because your children are, they're watching you. They're watching how you are responding to situations and they're taking that, you know, as their example um, and how to, you know, interact. So I think it's just really important um, to talk about. And I certainly hope that people are gonna see this and they're gonna realize that it is, for one, it's relatable, right? Um, yeah. They're able to relate to, but also, grow from some of the things that have been talked about um, in this video as well um, as they're navigating raising their children. And one more question, because people may ask this about your story or may be curious. Since you've had your son to now, there like his dad has no involvement, no never met him, nothing. It's been you and Jaden. It's right. been me and Jaden. Jaden has FaceTimed him years ago. So I would say it would probably, when he was three, maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. Just because with child support and everything, he just didn't feel like he should be paying child support. And um, one time I got uh, a sum of some, of some just because he had filed for something and, you know, the government takes out like a portion. He didn't know that would happen. But he's, was not very happy about that. And he doesn't feel like he should be paying child support. And for those who might want to know, yes, um, child support is filed, but I don't harbor on that either. You know, when God is ready to release that, or if he ever releases it, then great. You know, the portion that he did release was such a blessing in that season for Jaden and I and did so much for Jaden. And so I'm grateful. I mean, he didn't do it willingly. It was kind of like, <laughs> like a forced thing yeah. that happened. I mean, he didn't even know about it. They just took that portion out. But no, he has not been present. Jaden asked to talk to him, I want to say last year. And I emailed him because I don't have any of his contact information to let him know that, you know, Jaden just wanted to just talk to him. And he said, no, you're just trying to, I'm, get information because you want child support basically to find me whatever and that honestly wasn't the case Jaden really asked to speak to him and so I told Jaden I said mommy doesn't have his phone number but I'll show him this email and so he did Jaden circle back around of course and asked did he respond and I explained to Jaden you know how he responded but not to get discouraged you have to 
that's why you have to be rooted and grounded in the Holy Spirit and in God's word, because he will show you things about people that it's not necessarily directed towards you as much as they're still dealing with their heart issues and things inside of them. I don't know. I know he's experienced a lot in life, but it, a lot of men like to suppress things and just go on with life. Like it's happened. Okay. Next thing, this relationship didn't work out. Okay. Next relationship. And so I really try to teach Jaden that don't take it to heart. I know it's hard, but my prayer is that you see things in more of like the way God would want us to see him. And like, even in him not wanting to communicate with you or thinking that mommy's reaching out to you, be, reaching out to him to for child support reasons when I'm not is something we just have to pray for. You know, that we it's an opportunity for us to continue to pray for him and that when that opportunity does come, that you do get to meet him, that whatever questions you want to ask, but my prayer is that you'll just always just have that forgiveness in your heart, just like God wants us to. And I remember Jaden saying this last year, he came in the kitchen during the pandemic. <laughs> we're, we're all stuck in the house, couldn't go anywhere. And it was out of nowhere. He said, mom, one day if I get to meet him, you know what? I'm just going to give him a big hug and just let him know that I forgive him because you know why? Jesus forgives me. And I just really just want to meet him one day. And I might have questions, but I might not have questions and that's okay. But I just want him to know that I really forgive him. And at that moment, I was just like, God, he gets it. But I think he gets it because he's seen me walk in that. I've never spoken bad about his dad around him ever. He has never heard one single bad thing about him because I don't think he's a bad person. I just think just like you and I, he has made some bad decisions and he's made some good decisions. And unfortunately, one of the bad decisions is that he's made the decision to not be a part of an amazing person, this young boy's life. But that's a decision that he'll have to live with. And if he's okay with that, then he's okay with that. And all we can do is just continue to pray for his heart and that God will change it. And maybe eventually he'll come around and want to know who he is. And no matter what point in life that he comes in, because some of my friends are like, watch you start coming around when Jay's in high school and he's playing ball and he's going to show up to a game. If that's the case, then I know at that point too, God's going to be God and Jaden's heart is going to be in the right place. And I'm not going to be that person where I'm going to be like, well, he shouldn't just show up. He ain't been there all these other years. Well, I mean, why he's showing up now when he he's doing great and he's doing and he's successful or whatever that looks like or whatever success may look like for Jaden. I don't want that to happen. I always want Jaden to keep a level head of just like, his timing of God's timing and how he heals people's hearts, how he changes people. We don't get to dictate that. Yeah. Well, Brandy, I will say that um, it's such an inspiration because one thing that I'm getting from all of this is that you have not responded or reacted out of your flesh or out of emotion and that you've been able to really control that. And that is amazing <laughs> because I don't cut up like that either. Like I'm just not that tight. Now, if I want you to know, like I will say what I want you to know. Um, but I just think that you had opportunity, right? Because of who he, because of who his dad is, that you could have, oh, you could have profited I by even telling your story. If I couldn't have like when I mean there was opportunity for me to be on radio and all right. this stuff and I was just like that is not how I want to be known Jesus like right. I didn't do this <laughs> to like be on a platform or to be yeah. on like a social another social media blog or TMZ or any of that like this wasn't my goal like I'm not trying to be be famous off of like my sin right now because this is not anything to be proud of like this is horrible this is not good. I'm not trying to gain anything off of this either, but I also had to search my heart too and just really do some more deeper work in myself. Well, you have done it and um, it's, it's, it's in, it is certainly inspiring for sure. So, yeah. So I'm just, I'm hoping that people are going to see this and they're going to be like, wow, this is amazing, <laughs> right? 
they're probably gonna be like so they're probably gonna start digging too but it's okay like, i'm at a point in my life where i'm just like oh it's fine and they're probably gonna put pieces together and and i welcome that too so if you want to know more i just i do that to protect him too and like my goal is never to like put him out there as well or any of that um but it is my story and I just pray and I'm much more vocal about it than I was before because I was so ashamed but if you want to follow me I am at beautiful and blooming on Instagram my blog is there where I talk more about that and then you can find my personal page it's b b underscore c l e um you can follow me there and then I'll have my beautiful and blooming link to the Instagram page. I haven't written in a while, but I'm getting back into it. But I share a lot of my story and Jaden. And if you have questions too, I am, I'm an open book. I mean, God has given me my testimony and I believe to just share and encourage other moms. And so I am an open book. And if you want to ask me the hardest questions, I really don't mind sharing it all either. So yes. Um, so guys definitely follow Brandy. And if you are a mom, even if you're um, not a single mom, you're married, you're just looking for some inspiration, definitely check out her beautiful and blooming page. It will certainly be a blessing to you. So Brandy, thank you so much. for Thank you, Tracy. On. Thank you for your transparency and all of your honesty um, in this. And yeah, I'm just hoping that this video is going to uh, touch so many people. Um, walking in this this season of, of motherhood if they're single moms or even if they are no longer single moms but still you know holding on to some unforgiveness towards that other parent for whatever reason so yeah so brandy thank you thank you thank you for never telling me no when i called you <laughs> brandy can you come on can you do this so thank you thank you thank you i really appreciate it of course uh, yes if you have not subscribed make sure that you subscribe i'm hoping to bring you lots of good content talking about real life everyday things with people that are experiencing them um either in real time or in the past and how they've grown from that so definitely subscribe check it out thank you guys so much for watching